Hello guys and guys, and welcome back to another tutorial here on Tuesdays. Um, I'm really excited to bring you guys this uh, tutorial about how to make um, 2D bouncing text to go in your intros and whatnot. That, that's mainly what I use it for. I use it to put in my intros. Um, if you look at my various 2D intros, it's it's implemented in pretty much all of them somewhere. And um, it's a really good way to add animation to your text. It goes along with the beat and it kind of keeps things uh, moving even though there's not much going on else in the intro. Maybe it's just the title and you want it to bounce just to get some motion in there. So anyways, um, I guess I'll... Uh, I'll be all done elaborating and I'll get into the good stuff. So uh, in After Effects, you're going to want to have your logo imported already. And you're going to want some music of choice, uh, preferably with a pretty heavy beat. Um, so it'll be it'll be easy for you to sync the, uh, the motion of the text to. And um, we're just going to go ahead and make a composition to hold up everything. And um, I like to main, uh, call everything main comp just for the, <laughs> for the sake of simplicity because... Um, I don't like being original with my comp names. It's just not something I do. Anyways, uh, 19, ooh, 1920 by 1080 um, should do the trick. Um, 10. I cannot type today. I'm sorry. Um, 60 frames per second. Um, you can go down to 30 if you want. Really up to you. Um, I'll keep it at 60. I'm feeling a little daring. And your intro shouldn't be more than 10, so I'll just keep it at 10. But for the sake of the tutorial, I'll just put it at 15. Uh, background color doesn't really matter and we'll go ahead and click OK. So uh, you can toggle the transparency being shown or not. Um, I'll keep it enabled. Um, so you're going to want to go ahead and drag on your logo. I basically used uh, the same technique from the fancy text tutorial I made last week. And um, I came up with some pretty snazzy looking text saying my name. And uh, if you want to learn how to make text like this, you just go check out my last tutorial. It's called Fancy Text in uh, Photoshop. So you can go check that out, make some text, and then uh, you can come back here and follow the rest of the tutorial. Um, but there we go. There's our text. And uh, we're going to go find our music. Um, it's right here. I'm just going to double click it. Oh, no, that's the wrong thing. I'm going to double click that part. And uh, it's going to let me select what part of the music I want to use. I believe the beat drop happened after 30 seconds. Let me just preview. Oh, maybe a little bit before. Alright, so it sounds like it's somewhere right about there. Oh, I hit it right on. Let's go a little bit before. Alright, as you can see, I selected something with a pretty heavy beat, so it's going to be tons of fun to add the animation to. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and now that I've trimmed it, I'll bring it down here and you'll see it's uh, it's just the trim part that I selected. So if I ran preview now, it's just the music part that we want. Um, but as you also noticed when I ran previewed, the text doesn't really do anything. It just kind of sits there, it's all boring. And if you had um, this in your intro, people would get bored real fast. Um, so to add some motion to that, you can uh, pretty much just uh, bring up the scale. And uh, this is the usual process I go through. Now you'll notice how the scale, since it was originally like that big, and I brought it down to this big because it looked about right. Um, you'll notice that the scale is all off. It's not at 100% still, it's at like 17.8. So to fix that back, I'm going to hit Control shift c to pre-comp, or you can actually right-click and then go to pre-compose. And you'll name it uh, logo, yet again, don't really want to go around changing names unless you want to do like logo pre-comp. Uh, and this will basically rasterize it if you're into all those Photoshop terms, or it'll just uh, kind of flatten it out and make sure that the um, scale goes back to 100. Um, you'll get what I mean in just a second here. So we'll go ahead and move all attributes. That's important. And, um, click OK. So now if we press S on it to bring up the scale, um, you'll notice that's 100% and, uh, everything's good. So let's go ahead and start animating it to bounce to the beat. So, uh, the first order is to actually find where the beat is. So some people are better at this than others, but for me, I can naturally feel the beat and I can 
I can tap my finger to the beat. Um, so that's going to be really useful um, when trying to find the beat. Um, but I'm going to show you guys a really simple way to do this. Basically, you select your music comp and you run preview. You get a good feel for how the beat's going to go. And then you put your finger on the asterisk key on your keyboard. Now, if you have a numpad, on, it's on the very right side of your keyboard and it's just like a little star. Um, but if you don't have that, I believe you can do shift and then the number eight. I think we'll do the same. Let me actually test that. No. Um, so it looks like you will need a keyboard uh, with a numpad with the little star on the very right side. Um, I don't really know any other way to do this except for to find the beat uh, through trial and error. But for those of you who have the asterisk on your keyboard, this is basically what you're going to do. You're going to press uh, zero to RAM preview, and then you're going to basically press the star every time you feel the beat. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, show you an example of that. All right, so I did it a good number of times there. I did it real loud so you guys could hear through the mic. Um, anyways, that's basically um, me pressing the B. And notice how it makes these little markers. Now, these markers are where we're going to want to animate the text to bump. Um, and that'll make sure that the text bumps to the beat and um, everything syncs up nicely. Now, you'll notice I did it real fast. I did dun, 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 dun. You might even want to do half that. So I'm going to do Control Z. And I'm going to do this again. But half all right so see that uh, basically makes the markers where it wants to be and uh, from there you can go ahead and add your keyframes to where those markers are sort of so um you could go a little bit further but eight seconds is about enough for the tutorial because i don't want to do extra work anyways with that said, let's go ahead and zoom in on this first one here. Now we're basically want to position our marker, our playhead, on the um, on the first beat drop, the first marker. We're gonna hit scale, and we're basically going to drag this one two frames ahead. And to make sure that's two frames, you can hit page up twice and just move your keyframe where that is. Now go two back to where the marker is and then you're going to want to bring the the um the scale tiny bit down so i went from about 100 to 98 maybe 97 would be good 97 all right so now we have it hits the beat and it shrinks down uh, maybe even a little bit more let's go for 96 all right so it hits the beat and it shrinks down which kind of stays there so we're going to animate it going up we're going to go the same two keyframes out and we're going to go to 100. Maybe even want to go like four out for both of them. I don't know. Experiment around. Anyways, you hit the you hit the beat and it goes boop, boop, boop. Um, but you'll notice in some of my injuries, it kind of like does a, a rebound. Like it kind of goes for the initial bump and then it comes back a second time. So basically to do that, you just go another four out and then you go... I did, what, 96 before? Let's go a little bit less, so 98. You always want to make sure the second rebound bounces like a little bit less. And then you go to 100. All right, so now it goes boop. All right, actually, let me RAM preview that. Let me zoom back out. So you notice how's that nice bounce? Has that nice bouncing kind of rebound effect. And that's a lot of, um, that's a thing a lot of people are missing. So if I delete those, you'll kind of see the difference. See, it doesn't have that bouncing effect. So do it again. So I don't know, that's just kind of something I kind of found and something I really liked. Now, instead of doing this for every single little marker, you can actually just highlight it, control C to copy, go to the next one and paste it. Now, you notice it's a little bit off from the first one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and reposition it. All right, and I'll do these for all of these. You can actually make it even twice as fast and just select all of them, copy, and then uh, you can paste the next three all in one swoop. There you go. So that's the next three. And then you could even 
do it again to get even more volume out of it, but I'll just do it by hand. Why not? All right. So it's a little bit off, you see, by the end. That's kind of the downside of copy pasting. It gets a little bit off, but you know what? It's the price you pay for saving yourself a whole bunch of time. So if you want, you can go back and manually adjust, manually adjust those back. Um, it was a little bit off. Whoops. I done goofed. I done goofed just a little bit. Um, normally, I wouldn't spend this much time trying to fix it on a tutorial, but... A little bit of a perfectionist, you guys know that about me, so. Anyways, that's pretty much it. Let me zoom out. Ram preview here. Let's let it finish rendering, and here we go. So you'll notice it's a tiny, tiny, tiny bit off beat. Um, now you'll notice this once you're done, you're like, oh, it's time to delete them all and start over, but actually, to fix that, you're just going to move it a little bit back and see if that fixes it, and if not, you'll move it a little bit forward and see if it fixes it. So let me just try it now. Maybe even a little bit more forward. Just got to play with it, see what fixes it. Okay, it's getting there. Maybe a little bit more forward. Maybe even a tiny bit. <laughs> Perfectionist. All right, I think that's pretty perfect. Um, and that's that's just that's pretty much it. Um, now, if you want to make the the bounce a little bit more intense, you can actually just hit um, hold shift and select the second keyframe for pretty much all of these here. A second keyframe, second keyframe, second keyframe, oop, second keyframe, second keyframe. Basically what you're doing is you're selecting all these so you can change them. Now with all of them selected, make sure your playhead is on one of them, one of the selected ones. And then I'm going to bring it down to about 94. And that should apply it to all of these. See, all of the second ones changed to 94 since we highlighted them. Alright, now I'm going to RAM preview. And it basically made the the bounce a little bit more intense. Um, anyways, that's <laughs> that's pretty much it. Um, when it comes down to it, it's really not that um, complex. I mean, it's really simple to do, especially if you have that star on your keyboard to uh, kind of map out the beat. Otherwise, you just kind of go around and you know um, just kind of press um, you know just kind of listen to it and do them one by one. Um, pausing in between each one to find where the beat is um, but you know what um, it really helps to have that and um, I find it's really not that bad and it really adds a lot to your intro or um, actually you could use this for a lot of things not just intros so anyways there's that um, there is one more thing I add to the text on my intros and I didn't really go into detail on this on any other tutorial and um, I don't know, it might be just a little bit random in retrospect to everything else in this tutorial. It's not really having to do with the bounce to text, but usually I add a light sweep. Um, someone did make a comment on this, so I'll go ahead and address that even though it's off topic. And this is basically the, uh, ooh, um, let, me, let me grab that. This is basically the shine that goes over the text. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and change the rotation on that. You notice it's facing this way now. Uh, maybe change the intensity a little bit up. Intensity, oh, that's the edge intensity. Oh, that looks good too though. Um, and then I'll add the sweep intensity a little bit up. So I can basically add that to go across. I'll basically start here, add a keyframe at the center um, property, and then go a little bit forward and then just put it at the end. And now, we have that. So, I guess I'll let it finish my preview and show you it with the music and everything. And of course, you can manipulate these keyframes so the sweep goes a little bit faster by pushing them together. Um, you know what? Go crazy. Maybe even a little bit more. I don't know. Kind of unrelated, but if I'm going to do it, I might as well do it right. Okay, so anyways, that's pretty much that. Hopefully this helped you guys. I um, would really appreciate 
um, smacking that thumbs up button if it did. And um, who knows, if this helped you, it uh, might even help your friends as well. So make sure you share the love, share this tutorial around, share it on Twitter, Facebook, you name it, word to mouth. Say, hey, Billy, this tutorial is pretty cool. And uh, go ahead and show Billy. Um, anyways, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you did learn something. And um, I guess we'll see you guys next Tuesday for another tutorial. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you later. Peace out. Peace <laughs> out.